Hi, it's Glassboxed here and today we are going to talk about cucumber parameters. We're going to talk about what a cucumber parameter is and why you would want to use them. And we're going to see how we actually use parameters in cucumber, in particular using parameters in feature files to make our lives a little bit easier and to make things a little bit more manageable. So first of all, what is a cucumber parameter? A cucumber parameter is something that you want to pass. It's essentially a value that you want to pass from your feature file and into your step definition class. We use parameters to make our scenarios that we write in our feature files more expressive so that they make more sense but also so that we can reuse step definitions so before we even talk about parameters there's something we need to understand first so far we have been writing scenarios and writing step definitions and so far our understanding as far as the connection between the two is that there is a glue method somewhere that cucumber is using to identify what step definition class to look at when trying to run a test step in a cucumber file but we have not looked at how an actual test step is matched to an actual step definition method so for instance when we run this given step here how does it know that it is supposed to run this particular method here the way that happens is by matching the text of this test step after the keyword so in this case the text for this test step is i navigate to the testroom.com this line of text or this string is used to actually match up to a step definition. So in this case, I navigate to the test room happens to be used in this string here. So this is what is used to actually match a test step to a test definition. And this part here is, believe it or not, as misleading as it may sound, is only for reading purposes. This actually has no value or no real purpose as far as matching a step goes. So for instance, I can change this given to say something like when, and this method will still be matched to this test step, even though the keywords do not match up. And the reason that is, is because it is the line of text that is being used to actually match up to the step definition. So you might think, hold on, that's not true. That can't be right. Let's test this theory. Let's just save everything and run our feature file. And there you have it. You can see that our steps were matched. In other words, the feature file ran without any issues. So the reason I changed the given to a when is just to prove that the keyword used for a given step definition does not need to match as long as it's a keyword that belongs in the Gherkin language, i.e. given, when, and then, and there are others as well. It is this line of text here that is actually used to match to a step definition. So this is the mapping that is needed to match a test step in a feature file to a step definition method in a step definition class. Now, with this out of the way, the next thing to understand is how is this line of text actually matched? So you can notice that in this line of text, I navigate to the testroom.com. If we were to copy this in, right, say here, you can see that for character to character these are not actually an exact match 
in this case we have this character here we have this character here and we have these characters here so you might be saying hold on this isn't exactly a match so you know whatever you're saying makes no sense it does see the line here the line that we pass in into this annotation is a regex pattern so what is a regex pattern now i don't want to explain too much what a regex pattern is because that is somewhat outside of the scope of this video but really quickly a regex pattern is essentially a matching tool used to find strings in a text um, to put it more simply a regex is something we use which is basically a pattern that we use to match to see if we have found a particular string that we are looking for so in this instance when we pass in say this string to cucumber what cucumber is doing is it is looking through every single step definition that it is able to see and the first step definition it finds which has a regex pattern which matches to that test step it then ends up running that step definition so regex is not a very complicated subject but it is something that will take time to explain so in this instance I'm going to explain all the regex patterns that we come across as we go so if we just take this very first one in this we only have let's have a look three different methods of regex that we need to discuss we have this sign here this means the beginning of a string that is the meaning of this particular method or this particular symbol it means this marks the beginning of the string the dollar sign here is a way of indicating that this marks the end of the string so if you like this symbol here is effectively here just before the i character and the dollar is used just after the m character so in other words if the string that I'm looking for happens to be exactly I space N A V I G A T E space and so on all the way up to dot C O M then it matches this string the other characters to look for are these backslashes so whenever we pass in a special character in this string so in this case the special character is here the period or the dot character then for regex to be able to identify that as a special character we need to put in two backslashes before that special character great so now that we've discussed a little bit about this regex we can now actually start to talk about how to pass in a parameter now before we pass in a parameter there's something i want to look at really quickly in this step when i navigate to the cucumber tutorial page what we are basically doing is saying that we want to click on the java cucumber tutorial link so we've looked at this in the previous tutorial if i go here and if i right click on java cucumber tutorial and select inspect element then i can see that this is the text java cucumber tutorial so we're using webdriver to basically locate that line of text so that it clicks on the link but let's just say we wanted to do something like this let's say i copy this and what we'll do is we'll type in java here so this is now looking for an exact match of that step i.e cucumber java tutorial which is now this one oh my mistake is java cucumber tutorial so let me correct that and let's have another step to look for java web driver tutorial and what we'll do really quickly is let's actually save these and run so what we're expecting is cucumber to basically say that these two steps haven't been implemented yet
Okay, great. So we can see that Qcombine said that these two particular steps don't exist. So that's good. Let's just copy them in. So we will copy them in here. And what we'll do is we'll copy in this driver method as well. And we'll put one in here. So this will now go to Java Cucumber tutorial, which is the same as this line of text here. And for this one, we will go to the same place, but instead of Java Cucumber tutorial, we will go to Java web driver tutorial. So let's just copy that in here as well. And since there was a typo, we will go back and correct it here as well. So now if we save, Notice that these two lines are now not highlighted in that orange background. So this is the power of that plugin that we downloaded in the previous tutorial. When a line is highlighted in orange, Cucumber is basically telling us that it isn't able to find a matching step definition. So now that we've copied in these lines, we can basically get rid of this because we know that's not being used anywhere. So let's really quickly save and run this. Okay, so we saw that it first navigated to the Java Cucumber tutorial page and then the Java Web Driver tutorial page, so great. Now, think about this for a second. At the moment, we have our test step mapped to a step definition on a one-to-one -one basis. But wouldn't it be much better if we could pass this in as a parameter to a step definition which would be able to capture multiple test steps? Yes, yes it would. So what am I trying to achieve here? At the moment, if you look at these two test steps, they are almost exactly the same. The only difference here is this particular string, or strictly speaking, this particular word here. Other than that, both of these test steps are exactly the same. If we look at our step definition, again, they are almost exactly the same. The only difference is, is this word here. So if we think about this slightly differently, wouldn't it be easier if we were somehow able to replace this word on a dynamic basis? And that way we can write as many of these when I navigate to nth tutorial page steps as we want, but we only have the single step definition catering for it and that is what we're going to try and do now we're going to try and do just that to help us see how we can pass in parameters so what i'm going to do is i'm going to write in another third step and this time let's go to git tutorial so if we inspect that, that should also say git space tutorial. So let's go there. Now, the only thing we're going to do different this time is we are going to surround git tutorial in double quotation marks. Now, you should now be able to see a difference other than the obvious orange background, which means that this step hasn't been implemented yet. You should also see that when we put something in double brackets, the text inside it actually changed to a different color. This is basically Cucumber telling us that this is a parameter. Now, to make things a little bit quicker, what we're going to do is comment out these two steps and just run this as is. Now, I haven't covered commenting in Cucumber just yet, but when we put this hash sign in front of something in a feature file, that line is basically ignored. So in other words, these two steps won't run anymore. The reason we're doing this is because we want Cucumber to quickly help us generate a step definition for this step, which we know we haven't implemented yet. Okay. So now you can see that it's generated a different step definition. So let's copy that into our step definition class and we'll put it there and we'll save this and we'll go back to the future file and save it as well. Okay. 
So now notice that this step doesn't have the orange background anymore. In other words, it has identified that there is a step for it in the step definition class. So now if you have a look at this and this, there is a slight difference. So if I just copy this above this when, we can see that the difference is all of this part here. So what is happening here? So this is where we really use the power of regex to basically say that anything in between these double quotation marks will not be the same. In other words, if we were to read this line of text, I navigate to the Java Web Driver tutorial page. This is another way of saying that this text will always be constant, i.e. it will never change. It will be exactly the same. However, if we look at this, now what we're saying is I navigate to and this line of text here, the page, will always be constant. However, the text in this section will be different. So in other words, let's go through what these actually mean here. So as we said, special characters must have the backslash. So in the case of a period, we need two backslashes. But in the case of a quotation mark, a single backslash is fine. And that is because a period sign is actually used in Cucumber to serve a function. Hence why it has two backslashes. But quotation marks don't. They are just another character. So in this instance, the character only has a single backslash. And same here as well. So now we need to quickly talk about these characters in here. When we have brackets, brackets is a way of saying capturing groups. The text that goes inside brackets can be a text that occur multiple times, not a single time. The next symbol to look at is the star symbol. That simply means that a character will only appear either zero once or more than once. And finally, the square brackets, which basically symbolize that only a single character should appear here. So if you think about it, all we're saying here is a single character should only appear. And when we use this star sign, then we're basically saying that multiple characters can appear here. And then we're capturing the whole thing inside quotation marks. So in other words, what we're saying is I navigate to quotation mark. This will always be constant. And then quotation mark space page will always be constant. And the stuff in between the double quotation marks will always change. So now if we go back to this method, what Cucumber is basically doing is capturing this as a parameter, which if you notice is being passed into this method automatically. So the parameter we're capturing is being captured as a string. So we can now change this value to say something like link. And now what we can do is if we copy in this web driver method, put it in here, and instead of hard coding the value, if we now pass in something like link, we can now pass in a parameter using a feature file straight into a step definition method. So let's think about this for a second. We are now basically replicating what this step is doing as well as this step in a single step. So we can now actually get rid of these two step definitions because exactly the same thing is happening in this one step definition. If we go to the cucumber file and if we save, so let's remove these hashes first. If we now save, we should see that these two will now complain saying that they don't exist and this one should be fine. As expected. But why is that? The reason this has happened is because we haven't provided these double quotation marks. And if we save now, then these two steps are now magically working. The reason they're working is because these three test steps are now sharing exactly the same step definition method. In other words, we are passing in this parameter from Cucumber feature file into a step definition class. So now let's run this and see what happens. And that's it.
just like magic, a single step definition method is now able to catch multiple test steps from a feature file. So the power of parsing in these parameters from a feature file is exceptionally strong because by using parameters and by writing step definitions which logically sound the same and behave the same, will do different things based on the parameter that you pass in. So in this instance, we are actually able to click on any link on this particular page as long as that link is inside an anchor tag. As long as a link is inside an anchor tag, all we have to do is provide the text value of that link in a test step in our feature file and it should just work. So by using parameters, what you're basically doing is almost writing future test steps without actually having to write the code. And this is one of the most powerful things about Cucumber. Assuming you've written your step definitions in such a way, anyone should be able to write a number of feature files without actually ever having to touch any code and the feature files should just work. And that's it for this video folks. Thanks a lot for watching. Hey guys, thanks ever so much for watching my video as I really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date with my latest videos and kindly like and share my videos as this is one of the best ways for me to grow my ever evolving channel. If you have any ideas or suggestions for this video series, then let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, ciao. Thank you.